All right, folks, today is Mock Drafty Day. We haven't done one of these in a while. This is Mock Draft 14. Still planning on doing another group mock. That's going to be at some point in the near future. Something else I want you to keep an eye out for, though, and I think it could be kind of cool. So make sure you hit the subscribe button as well as the little bell notification so you don't miss it. I want to kind of combine, combine the live and me doing mock drafts. In other words, me doing a live mock draft showing you how I go through what I'm doing. Because a lot of this, Trevor Lawrence, whatever, you know that's the first pick. Spoiler alert. Some of this stuff, we've also kind of come to the point where this team generally is going to get one of these two players and you guys are good with it and everything's fine. But every once in a while, there's a pick that is not very popular. But I want to at least show you what the situation is, what I'm seeing, so that you can either correct me live and say, no, no, no this is why it's wrong. Or be like, all right, you know what? Maybe he's right, you know? Because I don't know all, all the time if you guys are right and the sources that I'm using are wrong. Or maybe you guys are just being fans, which usually that's what my brain defaults to, right? A bunch of fans get mad because I said this guy's not great. Well, that's what fans are supposed to do. But it would be fun, at least if it was live, to kind of show you what I'm seeing and the amount of work that goes in and the amount of resources that I use to at least hopefully get a little bit more appreciation as well as for me to be able to learn some stuff as you guys kind of tell me live. Like, look, I see that. Check this out. Just a thought. Anyways... A lot of work to do. Let's get started. So with the first pick in the draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Trevor Lawrence, quarterback out of Clemson. I've said it a thousand times. I'm excited that this draft actually gets a little controversial at two already. However, like usual, the first pick is kind of boring. And again, I'm pretty sure, especially considering Jaguars fans have a uh, second pick to look forward to. Nobody cares. Nobody's mad. So moving it right along. With the second pick in the 2021 NFL draft, the New York Jets select... Justin Fields, quarterback, Ohio State. This one is very tenuous. Um, there are kind of second, third options, but right now it's a question of whether or not it's going to be Justin Fields or Zach Wilson. I've, I've been reading a few things, and again, this is where things get kind of interesting in terms of hearing rumors and are these true rumors or false rumors or maybe they're real rumors that are fake. You know what I mean? Like this is actually from the team, but the team's pumping it out there because they're trying to say fake stuff. But there's a lot of people that, that, for example, I heard that if if uh, Zach Wilson interviews well, this is the pick. So apparently that's kind of a barrier. Otherwise, they're going Justin Fields. I don't know. But it's still Justin Fields on my board by a hair. I think Fields is five and Zach Wilson is six. So I'm going to stick with Justin Fields for now, and we'll see how that develops over time. With the third overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins select... Penny Sewell, offensive tackle, Oregon. The biggest objection that I see here um, is that, well, we just took two tackles, right? We got Austin Jackson in the first. We got Robert Hunt in the second. We have Those are two of our tackles. Give them time to develop. We'll see what happens. No, <laughs> I'm not doing that. First of all, Robert Hunt is probably a better guard than he is a tackle. If you just look at, at the draft when you guys drafted him, people called him a guard and said, oh, they took a guard, Robert Hunt, in the second round. It's like, no, 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 he's going to be our tackle. Kick Robert Hunt back into guard. He played more snaps at guard in college than he did at tackle. 1,450 snaps at left guard, 1,385 snaps at right tackle. He also had six snaps at right guard. I mean, it just, it, it, it's about even. The guy can play guard at 6'5", 336. He's kind of built like a guard anyways. And that's going to help improve our entire offensive line. We upgrade our guard position. We, we upgrade our tackle position. And we massively upgrade our other tackle position. So Penny Sewell is, I mean, this isn't just position, right? Well, we have two tackles. We don't need three tackles. Dude, you have a tackle and a tackle, and you're going to draft a tackle. It's a massively different thing. This is a generational talent. It's not even a question for me. The we drafted two tackles thing means nothing. By the way, that doesn't even include the fact that these guys were not good football players last year. Robert Hunt um, allowed 23 pressures. Austin Jackson allowed 38 pressures. 38. That's just horrific. Neither one of them had really good run. Well, I shouldn't say that. Robert Hunt was a decent run blocker because he's a flipping guard. Robert Hunt... Um, was not a good pass blocker. But again, we're going to kick him inside. Penny Sewell over here, Robert Hunt on the inside, and uh, Austin Jackson probably kick over to right tackle because Penny Sewell dictates where everybody goes and he's going to get the left tackle spot. That's how I see it. 
And I don't see a problem with that. I really don't. And, and again, it, it largely just comes down to the fact that he's so unbelievably good. And taking a wide receiver at three is kind of silly over a generational left tackle. My opinion. Let me know. With the fourth overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Zach Wilson, quarterback, BYU. So I'm really like on the fence on this one. Um, I know for a fact you're not getting rid of, of uh, Matt Ryan this year. Financially, it's impossible. It's going to cost way too much money. However, becomes much more likely, or, or I should say possible, next year. And so the, the biggest question generally is, when is the next time you can reasonably, reasonably expect the Falcons to be picking at four? Even as bad as the Falcons were, there's just too much talent to, to believe that for sure we're going to be picking at four again, right? I mean, Matt Ryan and Julio Jones can stumble their way into six wins on accident next year. So um, I just think with, with a in incredibly talented guy like Zach Wilson that some people say is, is the clear number two, he's available to you. You may not get another option like this again. I think it makes sense. If the plan is for sure, we're ready to move on. And you've got a new GM. You've got a new head coach. I, I, as I've said, I don't think the quarterback is the problem, but I also don't think he's the future. And when you're getting a whole new regime, and clearly this team needs a new a new rebuild, right? Tear down and rebuild. You kind of feel like quarterback has to be a part of that. And so, uh, again, I, I don't think this is the best way to fix 2021. But is this the best way to rebuild going into the future? Probably so again, I'm very on the fence, and if somebody says, no way, we're not doing it, I get that because I genuinely think he's going to be on the bench at least the first half of the year, and I don't know if he ever supplants Matt Ryan other than to just push him out of the way because we want to move on next year and force him onto the field. But um, again, this isn't going to fix 2021. This is just about the official teardown and rebuild begins today, and that's what the fans want, and I get it, and so... We're going to go that direction. With the fifth pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Cincinnati Bengals will accept a trade from the Carolina Panthers. The Panthers will be coming up from 8 to 5. And with the fifth overall pick, the Carolina Panthers select Trey Lance, quarterback, North Dakota State. So the trade compensation, not super important, right? I could tell you what it is, and then you get mad at me for no reason because it's just a first-round mock. So there's no actual compensation gone. However, I do think a third-round pick is reasonable, and most people get mad. Anytime you trade anywhere in the top 10, people are like, that's like five first-round picks. It's not. If you look at the trade value chart, I think a third or a fourth is reasonable. If you look at historical trades, the only one I could find that's even close is from seven to five, somebody gave up a fourth. This is from eight to five. We're going to do a third and feel good about that. But again, if in your mind that's six first-round picks, fine. Then they gave them six first-round picks. It's fake. It doesn't matter. It's, it's not real. As far as this goes, um, I was kind of torn primarily on what the Bengals do. Now, I, I know some people are like, why don't you just take Jamar Chase because then you reunite quarterback and wide receiver. I'm too stuck on the offensive line. I, 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 wide receiver still helps the quarterback, but I want to make sure that I don't ever, never have to watch him get carted off the field like that again, especially in his rookie year. Way too talented. He's our future. If he has nobody to throw to, fine. At least give him a chance to stand in the pocket and throw it away or something. He's just, he's getting brutalized. So um, it's an option. I get it. I want offensive line. I want better value. Now, the question I had for the Bengals is how far do I want to move back? I could reasonably expect the Broncos to want to move up for a quarterback. You could argue the 49ers. By the way, trading quarterbacks like Darnold and everything else, I almost did one, but I'm like, I'm just going to, I'm going to ease into that because I, I got to kind of figure out that whole value. Um, I, I did find certain ways to do that, but I'm, I'm just going to back off in this mock. Probably in the next one, I'll start moving around quarterbacks, but the 49ers um, potentially, uh, you know, lots of options here for teams that could possibly want to move up. Even the Vikings, if we wanted to go back that far, we can make that case. Uh, it sounds like they've been shopping around four quarterbacks and also possibly getting rid of uh, Cousins. But I, I figured to be safe, I'd rather trade back a little and then reach for a tackle that we want to get rather than trade back too far and miss out on a tackle. Even though there's another one, this is all about getting the right tackle. I'm okay reaching. Let's just get a little bit of value, get the guy we want, which is a bit of a reach, but who cares? Um, and then for the from the Panthers' standpoint, he, they're, they're basically the closest. I mean, you could say the Lions, but, I mean, at that point, let's just pick where we are. Um, so we're going to go with eight. 
very little chance that we lose out on any of these offensive tackles, get a little bit of compensation, and and the Panthers are probably one of the more aggressive teams wanting to come up and get a quarterback if, if I were to base it on fan reaction. But I've also been reading a little bit uh, at The Athletic and whatnot about um, their aggression toward wanting to find a quarterback. So it just feels right. You know, again, I, we could be more aggressive and trade back further, but we're going to go with this. Panthers get who they want. Um, you could also argue that maybe it's more than a third just based on how mu- how many people are fighting for it, right? A good value is a third. However, if the Panthers call and say, we're going to offer you a third, and the Broncos call, you say, hey, the, the, the price is a third, and they say, okay, a third and a fifth. And then, you know, it works its way up. Again, let's change it. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. So, anyways, the Panthers end up getting Trey Lance. Um, I really do like that fit. I mean, again, it comes down to what you think of Trey Lance and whether or not you want him as a quarterback of your franchise for the next uh, foreseeable future. But he's an incredibly talented two-way quarterback that can run and throw. And it um, seems like Panthers fans like it. I like it. So let's just stick with it. With the sixth overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select Jamar Chase, wide receiver, LSU. So pretty common pick. Um I think it's becoming, it used to be, is it Jamar Chase or Micah Parsons, which one? I kind of feel like it's becoming a little bit more, is it Jamar Chase or Devontae Smith is kind of where I'm at. Jamar Chase is still up higher on my board right now. Jamar Chase is number three on the board. Devontae Smith is number four on the board. So they're very, very close. It's neck and neck. Um, What I've realized is it's, um, I I, I don't know, I don't know. We'll leave that alone, but. Um, that's kind of where I'm at. It, it's more of which wide receiver than are we going wide receiver or linebacker. Micah Parsons is falling a little bit more down the board. And again, I do think getting that number one wide receiver is probably more the focus of most teams than getting an elite linebacker. That depends on your team. And it is a big need for the Eagles, no question, but it just feels a little bit more right. So we're kind of settling into that and it's becoming more which wide receiver. So let me know in the comments. First of all, if you agree that wide receiver is the direction to go here, they are higher up on the board generally, more important positions generally, and um, seems to be more popular with the fan base. And if you agree, which wide receiver do you prefer? But we're going Jamar Chase, wide receiver LSU to the Eagles. With the seventh overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Micah Parsons, linebacker, Penn State. Now, I, I can already hear the anger, right? This was an impossible pick. It really was. There's nobody on the board that made any sense. Um, there's not a quarterback here. Even if you you know, if, if you don't want to go golf, we don't have a quarterback. There's really nobody here. I'm not taking Mac Jones. The defensive line, there, there's I don't want to take Gregory Russo here. I don't want to take Quiddy Pay here. It's just it just feels too early based on my board. I considered strongly trading back, but I just couldn't really find any trade partners. Um, possibly somebody trying to leapfrog the uh the Bengals getting a tackle but i didn't want to move back that far i'm looking at the Chargers at 13 it's like i just we don't need to do that and so i looked at it and said we we don't have good linebackers that's no question and maybe lions fans aren't mad about this we don't have good linebackers and so i thought let's get a field general on this defense let's get a guy in the middle of the defense that sets the tone you know, he's, he's going to be able to just terrorize defenses at the linebacker position, and it is an important position. And we're going to have more time later on. we got an early second. Possibly, we you know, Barmore's probably gone, but there's a lot of defensive tackles in the second round. Edge rushers toward the back of the first that could possibly slide. Um, and we can still address that. Um, but it just it just it was just a tough spot. This isn't generally where I want to go with my pick. I think there's bigger needs. But he is the best player available. He is a very talented player, and so I, I I just felt like this was kind of the direction I wanted to go, especially since I could not really get a trade partner that wanted to come up. So Micah Parsons to the Lions at 7. With the 8th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Cincinnati Bengals are back on the clock, and they select Rashawn Slater, offensive tackle Northwestern. So I always make the mistake of just clicking and dragging the guys from my board over, so I can't see where they were, but he, he's generally like in the... Let's say he's 12th, and then you've got Christian Derrissaw at like 14th or something like that. So we're, we're at 8. We're picking the 12th best player on the board. It's not that big of a reach. And again, we move back. We're good, right? This is what we wanted to do. We didn't want to reach from 5 to 12. We'll reach from 8 to 12 to secure that tackle, the, the second best tackle in this draft class. And again, get a little bit of compensation back, third, second, 
five first round picks, whatever it is in your mind. We ended up getting that compensation, and that's going to help us uh, to to further build, especially offensive line. You get a third round guard or something, um, you're, you're you're you still have a lot of talent in that range. So. Um, not a whole lot else to say about it. It's a pretty straightforward pick. You could go another direction, but I'm just I'm stuck on it, man. I, I want I want offensive line. With the ninth overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Denver Broncos select Patrick Sertan, cornerback, Alabama. So this one was interesting. I actually stole this. We did a kind of a group mock through polls. In uh, it's another reason to subscribe and hit the little bell notification so you don't miss it when we do this. But I was just setting up little polls and said, who would you like to pick? And kind of in a landslide, Broncos fans said we want Patrick Sertan. And as I looked at it, I kind of get it. Um, you know, we've got Bryce Callahan is a talented guy that Fangio brought over from the Bears. But he's 30 years old. He's in the final year of his of his contract. He's probably not going to be here after this year. Michael Ojumita was the guy that took the most snaps at corner last year for us. And he's not a very good football player. Um, Devontae Bosby, whoever that is, is... Um, a free agent I, we've also got safeties that are free agents and again i don't know who's coming back and who's leaving or whatever else but there's not a lot here duke dawson um you know he's he's a young guy probably going to get another contract but there's not a ton here the, the other interesting thing about this is i think it's going to start getting aggressive for corner we've got um th about three corners in this range between sertan farley and horn and we've got guys you know like the cardinals like the 49ers that are extremely desperate for corner so that's something to remember for myself personally going forward. We might start seeing some trades if the Broncos say we really need it, if the Cowboys say we really need it, if the Giants really want a corner, if the 49ers really want a corner, you know, if the Cardinals really want a corner. And you got other teams that could definitely use one if they really like it. I kind of feel like you could start to see them going early, first of all, as we have teams trade up as you're because they're looking at other teams too saying we're not going to get them, right? It was a foregone conclusion that the Cardinals got a corner at 16. I don't know that that's the case. Um, just based on if you start having teams like the Broncos and the Cowboys and other teams saying we really want corner, this is the gauntlet right here for corners. So um, could definitely get interesting as, as far as we could see corners going earlier. We could see trades for corners and things like that. Um, depending on, you know, of course, how the board works out you know if the 49ers end up taking a quarterback instead or whatever then that could change things but um definitely could be interesting going forward but the broncos select patrick sertan with the 10th overall pick in the 2021 nfl draft the dallas cowboys select caleb farley cornerback virginia tech so this is another one that um is a little bit dire fans obviously want it pretty desperately um, I think everybody was kind of on the same page as far as being excited about Trayvon Diggs. Um, 12 pass break breakups is the thing where, as a rookie, you love to see that, right? He's one of the more disruptive guys in terms of getting his hand on the football. Um, did have three picks. Uh, as I've said, the statistics were not all great for him. He's young and ascending. He did give up 650 yards, which is a lot. Six touchdowns is pretty brutal. But he's young, and he's, he's obviously really talented in terms of, again, three interceptions, 12 pass breakups, 96.9 pass rating when targeted is not terrible. He's not the issue. I think everybody's excited about him. The issue is Jordan Lewis, Chidobia Wuzie, C.J. Goodwin, um, all free agents. Again, some coming back, some probably not. Um, not only are they leaving, but there's a question of the, the talent level overall. Uh, Jordan Lewis took the most snaps at corner. He really was not very good. He only had two pass breakups, not a single interception. He gave up three touchdowns, about 500 yards. You know, it just there's not a whole lot going on there. So we're going to get this great dynamic duo between Tray, uh, Trayvon Diggs, who's taken that second-year leap, as well as Mr. Caleb Farley out of Virginia Tech, which is one of the more... Um, the one thing I noticed about Patrick Sertan and Caleb Farley, even though on the board they're kind of like this. Caleb Farley, I think, is one spot behind Sertan. But I feel like Sertan is kind of the safe pick. He ranges between about 6 and 16 on most people's boards. Um, I think Caleb Farley was like at, at his highest was higher than Caleb Farley, but his lowest is lower. So, so there are people who are higher on him, but there are also people that are a lot lower on him. So it's just it's a lot more volatility with, with Caleb Farley. It's a, it's a more of a boomer bust prospect is the impression that I'm getting based on where you see him getting ranked. But um, I think that a lot of people are going to be real excited about getting uh, Caleb Farley to the Cowboys, getting that that cornerback duo, and really trying to help turn around this team. Because as I've said, you, you've got the talent on offense. I'm sure Dak's coming back. Um, 
you got to find a better offensive mind to figure out how to use those pieces. And then, uh, you know, we get that defense going. We got the pass rush. We got the corners. It's a great start for us. With the 11th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Giants select Devontae Smith, wide receiver, Alabama. I, I really want to get Kyle Pitts here because I like it, but Devontae Smith should have been gone a long time ago. Again, he's, I think, number four on my board. So this is a steal above all steals. Um, this is this is the, one of those things where it's, it's probable in a realistic scenario that he never falls this far because somebody trades up and takes him. And it's probably, a t and that's the thing. You look around and say, okay, well, who's going to trade up? The 49ers, the Chargers, the, the you know, what, I mean, uh, Vikings, no. But it, it's going to be a team that you wouldn't expect. That's the thing. It, it's, if I do it in a mock draft, people are going to say, you're an idiot. We don't need a wide receiver. But in reality, somebody's looking at this and saying, this is a top five prospect. We can trade up, give up a fourth round pick to move up like two spots and get this guy. Three spots, whatever. Um, but I, I'm trying to keep it to where people aren't going to riot and, 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 and at least somewhat of a decent fit, right? If, again, if I had the 49ers trade up and take him, some fans will probably like it because he's a wide receiver, but most are going to look at it and say, dude, we have a lot of other needs. We can't be giving up draft picks and taking wide receivers. So, um, bottom line is dream scenario for the Giants. Again, I would love Kyle Pitts because Kyle Pitts should be gone too. He's just not. There's, there's so many teams with so many desperate needs and, and other great players that are good values. You know, again, Caleb Farley is a good value at 10. Patrick Sertan is a good value at 9. So you're looking at it saying there's a huge need at a good value. Why would we do anything else? Well, because Devontae Smith is there. But um, because of all those things, Devontae Smith falls, Kyle Pitts falls, and they're sitting there going, how do we get two picks out of this? Because this is a dream scenario. Oh, the Giants have some other needs. I'm not saying they have to go you know, tight end wide receiver or whatever. They could go in other directions depending on the board, but this is beyond a no brainer. And again, it makes me sick that we can't take Kyle Pitts, but how do you pass on uh, Devonte Smith in this spot? The answer I believe is you don't. So Kayla, uh, uh, Devonte Smith to the giants at 11 with the 12th overall pick in the 2021 NFL draft, the San Francisco 49ers select JC Horn cornerback, South Carolina. So this is kind of where it all comes to an end, right? There's not a ton of, great cornerback talent at least as far as the when i by the way when i talk about my board for those that don't know it's not based on my evaluation i haven't done my evaluation yet i've watched like six prospects so far um this is based on aggregating the boards from across the web everybody's i mean from kuiper to mayock to uh brugler to uh tankathon draft tech all of them i've got 19 boards I think that I used and and I have more than 19 but some of them haven't been updated in the last month so I'm just using the 19 that have been um, so 19 different boards and then I average it out to give a general idea of where the internet stands on these prospects and where the internet stands on these prospects is maybe back of the first otherwise you're kind of looking early second after this point so again some teams needing cornerback I think you might have to start getting aggressive, especially the Cardinals at 16. They used to be in a real good spot. Now that we look at some other teams that possibly could go that direction, it's getting iffy, right? I mean, if, if the Broncos don't do it, maybe the Cardinals get horn. But the 49ers here, desperate. Um, you look at their situation, Verrett, Witherspoon, Taylor, Sherman, and Mosley, all free agents, uh, uh, K1 Williams, as well as Dante Johnson. I forgot about those guys as well. So you've got um, basically the entire team. Again, obviously, some of these guys are going to get, get re-signed, but not all of them, right? Probably not a lot of them because that's just corner. What about Jakuski Tart? What about Joe Walker? What about Solomon Thomas, Kerry Hyder, Jordan Willis, DJ Jones, Deion Jordan, Ezekiel Ants, uh, Ronald Blair? I mean, that's just the defense. So there's only so much money to re-sign guys like Kyle Juszczyk, who's important, obviously. you got two wide receivers. you got two tight ends. you got two quarterbacks. You've got two running backs. You've got three centers, a guard, and a left tackle to consider. You also could be potentially extending guys like Mike McGlinchey. And da -da 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 -da, right? There's so many things that have to get done that we can't re-sign all these corners. So, and, and, and you know this, which is why every time we do a group mock or whatever, 49ers fans are saying it has to be a corner. But again... Are we to the point where I'm not even going to risk? I'm, I'm looking at this saying, I don't know if I'm even going to risk it. I might just trade up. And so going forward, that's something to keep in mind is um, even the, the Lions at seven, I said nobody's going to come up. I think somebody should have taken a trade and moved up for a corner. 
Um, now that I'm really thinking about it, I think that should have been the move that I made. The Lions should have accepted a trade, possibly with the 49ers at 12. Probably could have got Quiddy Pay at 12. I mean, the way things are right now, it would have been a no-brainer. Russo or Quiddy Pay would have been available. Hindsight, right? It, it makes sense. I, I just, I didn't realize the aggression that would have been needed to get a corner, and, and I just think that that's possibly going to happen. So, again, that's not what we're doing in this mock, but I do think that's something to consider moving forward is teams being aggressive for corners in this little gauntlet here. Um, I don't think the corner or the, the Cardinals would be able to move up because the Lions wouldn't accept a trade to, to move back that far, maybe another team. But um, anyways, that's that. The uh, 49ers, kind of a no-brainer taking J.C. Horn, cornerback out of South Carolina. With the 13th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the L.A. Chargers select Christian Derisaw, offensive tackle, Virginia Tech. So um, kind of a relatively similar situation where it's desperate for offensive line. You could possibly see them trading up just out of fear because after Derisaw, things start to fall off pretty quickly. You've got uh, Wyatt Davis and Elijah Vera Tucker if you're comfortable going interior, which maybe they would be. Um, but obviously tackle is so, such a more important position. You know, it, it's one of the comments I always get is, why would you take a, an offensive guard in the first round? You can get those guys in the third. I get that, right? So um, I could see the panic and possibly wanting to try to move up to secure Derisaw. I mean, it's a good value. He's not really worth more than where we're taking him. But you, there's just the fear. Otherwise, there's the possibility that maybe we just want to trade back. There are other needs. We could go other needs, but... I just don't know if I'm the GM of the Chargers that I don't try to move up just out of out of a crippling fear that we're going to miss out. But we didn't in this instance. Uh, we'll say we tried and nobody would listen. And so Derisaw fell into our laps. We didn't have to move. Kind of a no-brainer pick for me. With the 14th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings will accept a trade from the Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins will be moving up from 18 to 14. And with the 14th overall pick, the Miami Dolphins select Jalen Waddell, wide receiver, Alabama. So there's a couple different things going on here. Um, Minnesota Vikings just missed out on Christian Derrissaw. And again, with that one tackle just sitting there, you might look at the Vikings wanting to be a little bit more aggressive. But with him off the board, we've got some options on the interior offensive line. We could go defense. you got Rousseau and Pay sitting there. But, but that's the other thing. We've got interior offensive line. We've got edge rushers. we got so many guys available that are kind of in this zone that we could go with that we're not going to miss out on somebody we want. We can move back a little bit, still get somebody we want, and accept some additional compensation. Again, decent compensation in this range is about a third-round pick, um, maybe a little bit less, but that's what, what I'm going to call it. If you want to call it something else, call it something else. I don't really care. And remember, well, how could the last one be a third and this one's a third? First of all, it's a shorter jump, but also the third-round pick that they're getting is going to be less than the third-round pick that the Bengals got. Right. Remember, the the Panthers are picking at eight. The Dolphins are picking at 18. So it's you know, it's a it's a lesser third round pick. It's not just third. Anyways, um, the other side of this is so while we're looking at it, saying we could we can trade back and still get somebody we like. Let's see if anybody is interested. Jalen Waddle had fallen way too far. Jalen Waddle is another guy that is arguably a top 10 talent. We're sitting here at 14. The Vikings are looking at it going, I don't want Jalen Waddle. I mean, we could take him, but that's kind of stupid. And so as I looked around, as we started making some phone calls, you know, you got the Patriots up next. The Patriots are taking somebody. Now, you know, there's they're, they're in a good spot. There's two guys for sure that are really talented guys, Kyle Pitts and Jalen Waddell. They're going to get one of them, but we got to make sure that we want to secure, come up and get the guy we want. Jalen Waddell is a slightly better talent, arguably, at least on the board. Um, but also you've got the connection with Alabama, with Tua and Jalen Waddell. So it just felt like this is our opportunity, possibly our last opportunity, because New England may be taking him. Let's let's give up the compensation. We got a billion picks. We'll move up with the Vikings. We're gonna take Jalen Waddle, secure the guy, and then obviously we've got Penny Sewell to help protect our quarterback. We got Jalen Waddle to help, you know, make our offense much more potent, much more lethal to to pair with our defense, which is actually already quite scary. Need some pieces, but it's a pretty good defense as it is. Um it just feels like a good fit for both teams. So Jalen Waddle to the Dolphins at 14. With the 15th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New England Patriots select Kyle Pitts, tight end, Florida. This happens every time, man. Kyle Pitts should be, probably will be a top 10 pick. I just can't make it happen. I can't do it. I don't, I, there's just too many, too much talent, too many other needs. Um, 
I always feel guilty letting Pitts fall to the Patriots at 15. They keep getting them in my mocks. Um, but it's just the way that it goes. And, and maybe it happens. You know, it, it could be one of those things, again, where there's just too many dire needs at other positions. And you get some real talented guys that just fall, especially when you got so many talented wide receivers. When you're looking at weapons, you know, you, you might in another draft have the Eagles looking to get another tight end in Kyle Pitts because they love their tight ends. You could have the... Um, I don't know, the, the whoever, any of these teams that are getting wide receivers or whatever, possibly conceivably getting um, a tight end. But because, again, it's such a talented, especially at the top end wide receiver class, they go that route instead of Kyle Pitts. Whatever the reason, here we are again, another Patriots draft getting Kyle Pitts. Fantastic value. Um, obviously, we have a lot of questions to answer in terms of quarterback and all kinds of things, but this is an unbelievable weapon that uh, regardless of how we decide to build into the future, this is going to be a great piece for us. With the 16th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select Gregory Rousseau, edge rusher, Miami. So again, car cornerback is a dire thing, but as I keep trying to remind people, this is just a first round mock, but there are other there are other picks coming. We have, we have a second round. We have a third round, fourth round, whatever, as well as free agency. So we didn't get one of the top guys. We didn't necessarily get our top need, but you don't always get your top need. This is also a pretty big need for us. Um, Chandler Jones is obviously getting much older. There's some questions about him uh, being around for too much longer. Also, Hassan Reddick. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised to see that the consensus is he's not coming back. Um, that one does surprise me. He is currently only 27 years old. Um, I wouldn't say he's the, the best pass rusher in the world, but just based on statistics in terms of getting pressures, he's actually really impressive. Um, so I'm, I'm quite surprised to see that, you know, Chandler Jones obviously will not be around for much longer. we got a bunch of corners leaving. And, and again, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't think anybody does. But I was surprised to read around and see that the expectation is that he will not return. Um, so that makes this also a pretty dire situation at uh, edge rusher, which is one of the premium positions in football. You're not going to get very far without having that. So, again, sort of disappointed that we didn't get a corner. But um, at the same time, you know, let's save our picks rather than trade way up and do something crazy and give away like next year's first round pick or something. Let's calm down. We get the, the best edge rusher in this class. Again, I think a lot of people would rather have pay, but... Gregory Russo stays stays above pay. I, I mean, it's slowly, slowly doing this, but I'm just I'm shocked. I mean, I I feel like the draft community, that you know, as far as fans and everything, have had pay above Russo for months. But the 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 big wigs that have the boards and everything, they're they're not doing it yet. So um, according to the board, we get the best pass rusher in the class. I mean, he's he's obviously a, a physical specimen. He's a big human being, and, and he's a talented football player. I don't mean to trash Russo. Um, but, uh, anyways, based on that, we're getting the best guy in the class off the edge. And, um, you know, while everyone else is panicking, we're not panicking, right? We're going to get the corners. We're going to get it figured out. This is a great find for us. And, uh, we're feeling good about it with the 17th overall pick in the 2021 NFL draft, the Las Vegas Raiders select quitty pay edge rusher, Michigan. I mean, we need defensive line help. I know, uh, some of the fans are, I think somebody just recently said it has to be a defensive tackle. It doesn't have to be a defensive tackle. It, 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 you might want it to be a defensive tackle, but Quiddy Pay is a, is a great player. Probably should have been gone by now. Um, a critical piece to any defense, and I just don't think the Raiders have figured that out. I, 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 I'm, I'm an admirer from a distance of the Raiders. I'm actually impressed with what Gruden's done. But at some point, we got to get over that hump, right? You know, I, I like what the offense has done. I like the fact that it seems like you guys are producing better than your talent level. I love the uh, the the smash mouth style, the the physical, aggressive. You know, we're going to play big boy stack up at the line, you know, playing with tight ends kind of football, smash you in the mouth with a running back. It's awesome, but the defense doesn't have that edge, and it's hard to be a smash mouth team with a, with a soft defense. It just is. So, we got to fix that. We got to do a better job getting some defensive help and um, a great edge rusher. Ask Washington, ask San Francisco. A great edge rusher changes everything. So I don't know if Quiddy Pay is, is, is a Bosa or a Chase Young necessarily, but if we can hit on them, if we can get that piece, we're gonna it's gonna transform us um, pretty quickly. So we're going Quiddy Pay at 17. With the 18th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select. 
Elijah Vera Tucker, offensive guard, USC. So again, we trade it back. We get the additional compensation. I'll be honest, a little disappointed that it went runner-runner at, at edge rusher, right? It, it kind of felt like, I think we're, we can still get one of those edge rushers here. But, um, look, we, we, we got a pretty good defensive line. We got Daniil Hunter coming back. I uh, feel good about Pierce coming back. I mean, he's a real good football player, assuming these guys come back healthy and shape, strong, whatever. We'll have to see the effects of COVID on some of these guys taking the year off. But, you know, they're professional players. I expect them to come back strong and ready to go. Um, if anything, healthier and stronger. They didn't just get beat up for an entire year. So, um it would have been nice to kind of add that piece, but at the end of the day, let's let's continue building this offensive line. Let's let's keep stacking it up because we're getting closer, but we're also about to lose some pieces. We got to really get this thing going. Um, the offense is becoming the strength. The defense should be getting better. Uh, but when you've got a, a really talented running back and you are a running run centric team and you don't have a good offensive line, it just it's not going to work. So Elijah Vera Tucker makes a ton of sense. It's a great pick, and again, we got the trade back and do it. So this is a, a, a double win for the Vikings at 18. With the 19th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Washington Football Team selects Mac Jones, quarterback Alabama. It's always weird to have a quarterback fall to you. You know, usually you trade up for him, but I, I think the situation here is that, um, I mean, clearly the Bears could have tried to trade ahead, but Mac Jones isn't even a great value here. So we're kind of reaching to make sure that we get him. But again, that is something to consider in the future. With Mac Jones being here, the Bears are sitting at 20. Um, they're probably going to be aggressively working the phones trying to make it happen. I know free agency is still a thing out there, and we got to see how that all shakes out. And that's what makes this fun. I can't keep doing the same mock drafts over and over again. Um, so hopefully when these trades start happening, that changes the needs for teams. If the Bears pick up, you know, Wentz or whatever, fingers crossed from a Packers fan, um, that changes the needs, right? So then all of a sudden there's no no desire for, desire for trades. Or if Washington gets a quarterback, Mac Jones falls to the Bears, whatever, right? Um, but at this particular point in time, they may be a little bit more aggressive. However, um, it's a matter of whether or not teams want to trade back and take those offers. And uh, obviously at this point in time, nobody did. They could have tried to trade with the Vikings, but the Vikings are not going to let you trade up and get a quarterback here. So it is what it is. But uh, Washington is able to let Mac Jones fall right into their lap. A lot of ch different opinions about Mac Jones. Some people have him like top 15 other people say he's like a mid second or later kind of a prospect um so generally he's uh, on my board sitting at about like 26 27 so if you're desperate for a quarterback at 19 it's not even in in quarterback value that's not even a that's not even really considered a reach so uh washington feels good enough about it to take mac jones and hope that he is the future of this team and, and you got to feel good about it. I mean, the Bears and Washington are both looking at it saying, look, man, we just need some offensive help. We got we got some good defensive pieces. We got a good defense. We got to get the offense going. So we're going to start with Mac Jones, build up the wide receivers. We got a good running back. You know, going to need an offensive tackle maybe in the second round if at all possible. But uh, it's a starting point, and that's what we're going to do at 19. With the 20th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears select. Rashad Bateman, wide receiver, Minnesota. I, I sat on this pick forever. I could not figure out what to do. There's not a lot of real good tackles. We could reach for a tackle. We could trade back and try to get a tackle. We could stick and take Bateman, who's a good pick. I mean, Bateman's a good wide receiver. He's the right kind of wide receiver for what we need to kind of be that Allen Robinson replacement, hopefully. Um, it just feels wrong to me. You know, we're, we, we need a core. Otherwise, what are we doing, right? We're messing around, and it's not just, well, we're rebuilding. So we'll get a wide receiver, and then we'll get some offensive line. And then we'll, The problem I'm having is this defense is going to keep doing this. It's just going to keep doing this over the years. Guys get older. Guys are leaving, and, and the Bears have not had any picks because Pace has just given away picks like nothing, which everybody thinks that's that's the cool, new, trendy thing to do. Or just give away picks. Who cares? Who cares is that when your guys start to age and they get too old and they leave, who's going to replace them? Nobody. There's nobody there. There's nobody you've drafted and are grooming. Who's the next Akeem Hicks? Who's the next Khalil Mack? Who's the next Kyle Fuller? Who are replacing these guys? Nobody that's any good. Um... So we keep playing these games in free agency. We got to start getting some pieces. And so that's that's my biggest concern is we're kind of at a point where if we're going to push in, we better push in. We got to do it quick. Otherwise, just forget it. Forget it. Let's tear it down. Let's start building up this defense and, and, and try to figure something else out. So we're just kind of stuck in this weird kind of no man's land, you know, where it's like Bateman is a great pick for any other team. But I'm like, 
we got to do something kind of kind of desperate, kind of dire here. Um, and I just don't have that ability right now. I don't have a quarterback. I don't have an offensive tackle. I don't really have the things that I need necessarily, again, unless I want to reach, which I kind of don't. So um, we're, we're just going to be smart. We're not going to be drastic. We're not going to do anything crazy. We're going to take Rashad Bateman, wide receiver out of Minnesota. With the 21st pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts select Aziz Ojulari, edge rusher, Georgia. So first of all, props to Ojulari, who's shot up through the boards. I don't think I've ever had him in a first-round mock before. Um, we're starting to see some some fluctuations, especially at the end of the first guys that we haven't seen very much of are coming in. Guys that we used to hear about all the time are dropping out. Um, Ojulari has never, I mean, it's it's been Rousseau and Quiddy Pay for a while at one and two, and then the question is who are the second-tier guys, and there's a whole new changing of the guard here. So we're going to start with Aziz Ojulari. As far as the pick, I mean, look, the Colts clearly need some some defensive line. I mean, look, they need a lot of stuff. I mean, a lot of people are panicked because – months ago this was a great pick now it's like no we need a quarterback no we need a tackle no we need a wide receiver and i get that there's no tackles there's no wide receivers there's no quarterbacks so again we can panic or we can just look at it rationally and say there's a very good football player sitting right here at a position of need right we've got um deforest buckner on the inside we don't have a lot of talent on the outside especially when you look at uh autry and houston 31 and 32 years old who are both free agents again maybe they get these one-year contracts to stick around but even if they do these are not the most talented guys in the world and what we got bonogo uh Bonogu and kimoko ture waiting in the wings i mean it's just it's it's an extremely underwhelming group to begin with it has to be addressed it is the right pick as much as again i would love to be desperate and try to fix this offense I can't give you a quarterback tackle and wide receiver in one pick, right? These are going to be needs regardless of what I do here, and there's just no good value at any of those three spots, including wide receiver, which seems crazy. Um, but I, I just I, I feel like at 21, Aziz Ojulari is probably the best, most rational thing we can do without being desperate, and that's not what I want to do. So the Colts select Ojulari, edge rusher out of Georgia. With the 22nd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tennessee Titans select Jalen Phillips, edge rusher out of Miami. So again, another little change here. It's kind of interesting. We got two Miami pass rushers, a great duo there with Jalen Phillips and Gregory Rousseau. It'll be interesting to see if Jalen Phillips ends up overtaking Gregory Rousseau. Jalen Phillips was an afterthought early in this process. Uh, Gregory Rousseau was a top five pick. I mean, if you go back to last year's off season, you know, last June or whatever, he was like a top three pick. So That'll be kind of an interesting uh, development because they're getting kind of close at this point. But the Titans, I mean, it's kind of a no-brainer pick. Um, a lot of a lot of great things, talented offense. Um, but the one big thing is there's just no pass rush on this team. And uh, we tried to go out and get Jadavian Clowney and hope that that would transform things and give us that last little bit of bit of something that we needed. Just wasn't the right thing. Um, teams need to just kind of realize that that the whole Clowney thing is just not working out. So stop doing that. But we got to go out and we got to get our own guy. We're going to go with a, a, a pretty talented guy in Jalen Phillips out of Miami. With the 23rd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets will accept a trade from the Green Bay Packers. The Packers will come up from 29 to 23. And with the 23rd overall pick, the Green Bay Packers select Jeremiah Owosu Koromoa, linebacker, Notre Dame. So the biggest objection is going to be the Packers never take linebacker. They're certainly not going to trade up for one. Check this out. You're looking at, first of all, again, when I do trades, I don't look at who wants to come up. I don't care. The question is, do I want to move back? You can call all you want. If I have a guy that I want, I'm just going to take him. I'm looking at a group that's all linebackers and running backs, and I don't care. I don't really want that. The Jets, as I see it, with Robert Sala coming over as the new head coach, if we're going to embrace that style of team, the biggest thing we need um, for our team, interestingly enough, I, I had just got done reading that the 49ers, when they had developed their philosophy on how to build their team with Shanahan and whatnot, they said the core of what they wanted to do was quarterback and defensive line. That's you know a, a dominant defensive line and a great quarterback. And that's how they set out to rebuild their team. And I'm looking at Salah, who's the defensive-minded guy. We just got our quarterback um, in uh, Justin Fields. 
now we need to help to build this defensive line and the one thing that's massively missing for a robert solid defense is a pass rusher and there's nobody available however at the back of the first round there's some options so i'm looking around is anybody interested the packers have been very aggressive in the first round recently it's not it's not generally what the packers do but that is very, um, you know, you, they traded up for Jordan Love. They traded up for Jair. They've traded back and forth and all kinds of stuff in the first round. Um, and as far as not wanting a linebacker, one of the interesting things about getting this new defensive coordinator is that their style of defense, whether it's a Tampa 2 defense that um, Joe Barry is, is primarily uses, or whether it's a Vic Fangio-style defense, which is supposedly the reason he got hired. Either way, the biggest missing piece is a really athletic, talented linebacker. So the Packers in the past haven't really done that, but it's not a it's not as though the Packers as a team just don't like them. It's about what do you need for your scheme. And you I'm telling you, you got a defensive coordinator coming in here saying the one big piece we're missing is a guy like Jeremiah Owosu Koromoa. So it does make a lot of sense. Again, we got two teams that have different needs and they swap spots. What was the compensation? I don't know. I don't care. But I feel like it was a really good partnership between the two teams that don't see each other, don't really care, and they're both uh, in a great position to be able to get the, the players that they need. So the Packers come up and take Jeremiah Owosu Koromoa, linebacker out of Notre Dame. With the 24th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Alex Leatherwood, offensive tackle, Alabama. I love giving you guys Najee Harris. I know that that's a real popular pick. You guys love it. I love it. Everybody loves it. The offensive line is getting kind of brutal here. Um, there's some talk about possibly villain away of a leaving. You just lost your long-term center. It's just, it's it's not good, man. Things are, are, are getting bad. And um, plopping Najee Harris in the middle of this offensive line disaster that we're starting to see um, even if Villanueva stays for a while, he's not going to be here after this this coming year. We have to start rebuilding this offensive line. Um, I could have considered going Wyatt Davis and getting a guard, but uh, you know, there's no real centers, and I just I, I felt the need. And again, I was stuck on this one for a while. We could go Najee Harris, we could go a couple other directions, but um, I just felt like we needed to go offensive line, and we needed to take a big swing at offensive line. As far as Bears fans saying, are you kidding me? We, you can take a tackle at 24, but not at 20. This is a reach. Alex Leatherwood is sitting at a, at kind of around 30-ish, so we're we're reaching a little bit for um, for Alex Leatherwood. But again, it's just, in my estimation, it's getting dire. The entire offensive line, whether it's guys that are going to be leaving soon, guys that have already left, or guys that just aren't good football players, it just concerns me across the line. So. Um, I want to start rebuilding there, especially if, you know, we got Roethlisberger for a year. I don't know, man. I just, I don't think we're going to do anything in the next year. And so I want to start building into not so much how do we win the Super Bowl in 2021. I'm not opposed to it. We're going to do everything we can to win it. The point is, though, I mean, let's be completely honest. We need to make sure that 2022 and 2023 are dominant years um, while we still have this elite defense because, um, we're, we're, we're falling apart faster than we're able to to replace guys, I guess, is my biggest concern. So um, we're, we're, we're going to go Alex Leatherwood. I know it's going to be a controversial pick, maybe, but um, it's just what felt right to me in the moment. So Steelers take Alex Leatherwood, offensive tackle out of Alabama. With the 25th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Samuel Cosme, offensive tackle, Texas. Again, this is an even bigger reach because it's, you know, similarly – he was after Leatherwood, and he's about two, three spots behind. But I just I just don't care, right? We, we got Trevor Lawrence, considered a wide receiver here, but um, the offensive tackle situation is, is really pretty bad. And I just want to make sure it's not as bad as, for example, the Cincinnati Bengals or the Chargers who plopped a really talented quarterback behind terrible offensive lines. Still saw some really great things, but it's just it's super dangerous. We're not that bad, and we're kind of at a point where if we can just get a couple pieces, we'll be okay. Um we're going to need to get some weapons at some point. I want to get a, a, a better wide receiver to drop in the mix. Because, again, as I've said a lot of times, I like the guys you have, but you don't have that true number one. Um, and so I, I want to keep building around them, but I just want to make sure that this offensive line is figured out. Uh, Samuel Cosme for a long time was the consensus number two tackle. He was kind of in that 10, 11, 12 range. He's fallen pretty far. So you, you depending on how you look at it, you could look at it and say this guy is garbage. That's why he's falling. Or you can look at it and say this is a fantastic value. Some people think he's much better than he is. But 
again, I'm kind of in that point now where when you draft a guy like Trevor Lawrence, I really don't care what you think. I don't really care about the value. I'm getting an offensive tackle because we need to upgrade that. Even if he's a mid-second round value, which you know, he's better than that, and I wouldn't reach that far. But point is, I don't even need a Penny Sewell. I need a guy that's not a sieve. And if we can get that, I'm feeling good about it. So Sam caused me to the Jaguars at 25. With the 26th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select Zavin Collins, linebacker Tulsa. So Jeremiah owosu Karamoa, I don't know why I keep... It, it, the more you say it, the harder it is to say. Um, generally, this is where he goes. He goes to the Browns here, but uh, the Packers, knowing that, have decided to move up and, and take him. But Zavin Collins is flying up the board. I mean, he may overtake JOK at some point because they're very close, and it's very easy to see why. I mean, if you just look at what PFF had to say about him, granted, it's Tulsa, so it's a lesser amount of competition, but his ability in every phase of the game is really impressive. I mean, his coverage, and he, and at 260 pounds, which blows me away, he's a great coverage linebacker. Now, again, maybe that won't translate in the NFL, but he's at least shown the ability to do it at some level. Coverage, run defense, sideline to sideline, um, uh, blitzing, attacking the quarterback, just across the board, he can do it all. So um, I don't think the Browns are upset about it. I mean, maybe they wanted JOK a little bit more, and we could obviously go different directions or whatever, but I want to go defense, obviously. That is clearly the direction we're going to go. And um, I think, again, just getting sort of that field general. A, a pass rusher would be fantastic if they didn't just, you know, have some guys kind of reaching on them and, and, you know, technically we could reach. I mean, we're. I don't know. I, I, I won't spoil <laughs> the upcoming picks, but um, I, I don't want to reach. I don't see any reason to. Zayvon Collins is a good value. There's no reason to reach for something more, and we've already got Miles Garrett. So uh, Zayvon Collins to the Browns at 26. With the 27th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens select Kadarius Toney, wide receiver, Florida. Um, I kind of started to like this pick more and more as we went along. Um, Kadarius Toney has always reminded me of Ty Montgomery, the, the Packers old wide receiver, completely different build. Most people that probably have done the scouting, are like, I don't know what you're talking about. But the, the thing is when I was looking at guys that kind of do the, you know, jet sweep coming across the formation kind of stuff, you know, occasionally they'll grab the ball and take off. Um, Kadarius Toney has a good amount of carries, but he's not that guy. He straight up lines up in the backfield. He's a slot receiver slash running back. Not that he does it a ton, but that's sort of. His ability, his skill set, great, you know, uh, after contact guy, avoiding tackles, breaking tackles, that kind of a thing. And so we've got a, a different style of wide receiver. Again, you got Hollywood, who is your, you know, burner down the field. And then we need our possession guy. And we got a guy that can line up outside, he can line up in the slot. And for a team that loves to run the ball, we'll take seven offensive linemen and, and have our quarterback there. We can have seven offensive linemen, a quarterback, and a wide receiver slash running back back here and it's just the kinds of things that the, the baltimore ravens could do with a Kadarius tony um given the the unique skill set that the baltimore ravens already have already possess it just kind of feels like a cool pick like they could do a couple cool things he could just be a straight up good wide receiver or we could do a couple extra cool things with him so um pretty excited about the pick tony to the ravens at 27 with the 28th pick in the 2021 nfl draft the new orleans saints select asante samuel cornerback florida state Really tough decision. Um, again, it's another another team where I'm I'm desperately trying to figure out what's the pick I can make to give us a Super Bowl championship. But the fact of the matter is, without Drew Brees, we might be in trouble. And I wish I could get us a quarterback, but I can't. Uh, the the days of Kyle Trask being a good value here are over. He has slid into the third, fourth, fifth, seventh, fourteenth round. I mean, he's just plummeting like crazy. Um, there's just not a lot of options here. So. Um, Again, free agency is always a thing, and maybe we already have a guy on the roster that we like. I don't know. But um, as I'm looking at it, I mean, we got running backs. We got a defensive tackle. We have got we could go Wyatt Davis, even though we got Cesar Ruiz. I feel like we need an additional guard after him, even if Ruiz takes a step and becomes a really good uh, guard. I don't, I don't really know. But, again, I just I have a hard time going guard here. So then as I looked at it, I thought, you know, the, uh, the cornerback position is incredibly important. Marshawn Lattimore is good, but he just, he hasn't really, I don't know. It seems like he's getting worse every year. Like he went from being one of the greatest corners we've seen as a rookie to like, he's still really good to he's, he's okay to like, I just, I, you don't even hear about the guy anymore. 
But beyond that, you got uh, Janoris Jenkins is 33 years old. P.J. Williams, Ken Crawley, Johnson Betamosi, they're all free agents. You got Patrick Robinson in his final year. Um, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson is a slot slash safety. So, I mean, it's just who's like, okay, so let's say Lattimore's still dominant, whatever. Okay, I'll back off that one. Who's number two? I don't know. I mean, Janoris is locked up for a while, but again, at 33 years old, I have a feeling he's not going to make it through the, the final years of his contract. It feels like kind of the best thing to do, and, and Asante is a bit of a reach, but I kind of just don't care. I'm, I'm in such a position of I want to get kind of a, a, a big, impactful move here that isn't a guard or something of that nature, and um, we, do, we, we could use that additional cornerback. So we've got our two really good pass rushers. Now we have two talented corners. It helps to compensate and soothe the pain I'm feeling about about not having Drew Brees going forward and, and what that may mean for us. But I still have confidence that this is going to be a fantastically vicious, violent defense, and and I can rest well in that. That's what that's all I can do. I don't know what else to do. With the 29th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Carlos Basham, edge rusher, Wake Forest. So the the trade worked out fantastically. We wanted to move back. We wanted to get an edge rusher. We get, um, I mean, nobody from all these picks from the Steelers, Jaguars, Browns, Ravens, Saints, nobody ended up taking one. So we get the best next t uh, edge rusher available. And again, the, the thought process here is we want to build in the direction of what Robert Sala likes. And I think Carlos Basham is a fantastic piece. We got the Basham twins there now. Um, and it's just, I, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I've kind of already explained the thought process behind it. And, um, Excited to, to build in the direction of the vision of Robert Sala. With the 30th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Jason Owe, edge rusher, Penn State. This is just generally the direction I like to go is getting an edge rusher for the Buffalo Bills. As I've said in the past, we've got Jerry Hughes, but he's 5 billion years old. I mean, he's such an incredibly talented guy, but how much longer? I mean, he's in the final year of his contract. He's already 33. For all I know, he turns 34 this year. Um, I don't think we signed him into 34, 35, 36, so I, I kind of just think it's done. Um, we went out and got A.J. Epinesa. That has proven to do nothing. We drafted Ed Oliver. That has not done very much for us. So we've been trying to build up this defensive line and, and, and in my estimation, failing, and we, we just have to keep trying. We have to find the complement to what is now a very dominant offense, and and that's that's clearly the path we have to go if we want to – win a Super Bowl and, and and the Bills are one of the teams that are in a position I mean it's, it's straightforward right the Saints and the Bears and all these other teams it's like we've got such talent over here but I just don't even know what to do over here the Bills it's like they're, they're already right there knocking on the door um, technically they could do nothing and possibly get to a Super Bowl but um, you know it's, it's one of the things we can do and, and it's such a it's such a big piece right I mean if you take Hughes and then always is a, is a hit and let's say you know, Oliver takes a step or whatever. I mean, it's just we're already close. This could easily put us over the edge. So, I mean, it, again, it's kind of a no-brainer, and it's an exciting pick because this could be the piece. So, Jason Oway to the Bills at 30. With the 31st pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Kansas City Chiefs select Wyatt Davis, offensive guard, Ohio State. Look, I know there's a lot of pain right now, right? I think a lot of Packer fans have just gotten over the pain. Bills fans probably just getting over it. You guys probably got another week to go. So I'm going to try to be gentle here. But all I'll say is I've taken offensive linemen in the past and gotten crucified. I'm curious if you're going to be a little bit more open-minded about the prospect of helping to build the offensive line. And listen, I understand. Well, it's because Fisher was hurt. I get it. I understand that. The problem is it wasn't just Fisher being out that caused the problem. It was the entire offensive line. Right. So Wiley was obviously an issue, but Nick Allegretti, who was your left guard all year, gave up seven pressures in this game just by himself. Seven. Um, so, you know, Wisniewski gave up five pressures, including four hurries and a sack. So it's it's not good. This is not a good situation. And generally speaking, these are not the greatest offensive linemen in the world. So. Listen, I know like when you're on top of the world and everything's great, it's like, ah, who needs a stupid offensive line? Let's get more wide receivers. Let's get more firepower. Like we can just, we, we're, we're good, dude. We're good. We got to take care of this because we know now what the kryptonite is. We know what the problem is. You assault this offense. And listen, 
Injury, I get that. As well as Tampa Bay's defensive line is not something everybody can do, but this is now the formula. This is now the formula of how to how to beat the Chiefs, and we have to literally build a wall between defenses and Pat Mahomes so that this doesn't happen ever again. So we're going to get a guy that has fallen entirely too far to begin with. Again, it's not a sexy pick, but Wyatt Davis out of Ohio State is a beast. He is a monster, and he is going to be a massive upgrade at guard. We do not have, outside of maybe Fisher, the most elite offensive lineman in the world. We have to do better. We can't just be okay with okay and then just stack up on, on you know, wide receivers and running backs and, and the, the flashy stuff. Um, just my opinion. Again, I know it's a sore subject. I'm sorry, but that's what we're doing. Finally, with the 32nd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Christian Barmore, defensive tackle, Alabama. I mean, this couldn't have been any more perfect. Barmore was sitting at 24. I mean, it's it's an unbelievable value, a guy that should not have probably fallen this far but did, and it's a giant need for Tampa Bay. And, and for those that are um, confused by the fact that they had one of the most dominant defensive lines and they're picking a defensive lineman, the problem is the guys that are leaving. There's a lot of guys um, along that defensive line that will not be back next year, and so we're going to try to keep the core of what made this, this team great. Great. We're going to just keep it great, right? So... Um, I think for those that know, know, I mean, this is a no-brainer. Um, I had just seen, I think this morning, PFF had tweeted out that this is the best pass-rushing defensive tackle in college football for the last two years, something to that effect. So um, big, dominant Alabama guy. It just Again, it's, it's kind of a no-brainer for me. Well, that's going to do it, folks. That is our mock draft 14. So I'm um, excited to get back into the swing of doing that. Again, please like please subscribe please hit the little bell notification so you don't miss not just mock draft 15 whenever that comes out but also doing group mocks doing polls doing all kinds of interactive stuff i want to make sure that you're a part of that and don't miss out on that because i love getting you guys involved otherwise drop in some comments let me know what you think and i'll catch you next time